Alright, so as you can see, Hammond has changed their patch selection scheme now to the telephone entry pad. So you just hit a number, there you go. These are single digit patch selections. One of the things I really like about this is you can now pick any parameter that you want to address, let's say Leslie in this case, and just hold the Leslie button and as you see the screen will automatically default to that. Now, right now it's set up to the 122. I actually had programmed a Leslie that I'm actually pretty enamored with. Um, it's based on the 31H and this has a couple of my uh, tweaks to it, mainly the low rotor speed now being 60. And it now has a new parameter involved for the Leslie, and that is the, uh, the color. So when you get to the amp speaker menu, just scroll to the right, and you'll see there's a new parameter called color that was not on the SK-1. The color knob, the color uh, parameter to me makes it sound like the vent, the, um, vent covers are on, so it sorts of mutes the high end a little bit. Turn it off. And at loud volumes, you can really hear how that works. Another new parameter on the XK1C involves the Leslie and a new parameter called Mix. This was not available on the uh, SK1. So hit your uh, chorus vibrato. As you see, it goes right to the chorus vibrato page. Scroll to the right, and you'll see that we now have the mix parameter. Right now it's set to even, which is a full half and half. You know, the fundamental sonic image as well as the chorus slash vibratoed mirrored image. So you can go, you can change the mix to any level you want. So you can adjust to the most um, subtle chorus vibrato. Um, in fact, removing the chorus vibrato so you have direct 64 only. <laughs> Or you can scroll all the way to the right and go full on mirrored image. Whereas you go back to even, which is half and half. So it's really nice that you can really duddle, uh, dial down the subtlety of that chorus vibrato, which I think is phenomenal because I'm a guy that didn't use much chorus vibrato until recently. Um, and I, because I've always felt that that image was just too much. Yep, big fan. Another nice feature, when you combine the chorus vibrato using the mix control, using the emphasis knob, which of course, or the emphasis parameter, which of course is on the SK-1. It almost acts like a boost to the upper draw bar to get a little more shimmer on it. Um, so again, between that and the mix control, you have a lot of variables there to really tailor the chorus vibrato to the sound that you are looking for. And as you can see, even though the XK1C is only a 61 note keyboard, compared to my SK173, it doesn't look, shall we say, teeny or disproportionate. Uh, the, the, the wooden end caps really set this off, making it look more like an organ from the sides, which again, to me, if you're doing a Hammond organ, there has to be wood on there somewhere, even if it's just, even if it's just from my own peace of mind, there's, you know, you, you, it's hard to think of a Hammond B3 without having some sort of wood. I think the SK-173 is a great looking machine. I, I, and I do like what they've done with the end caps, but putting the wood end caps back on to me is a step in the right direction.
But again, what I like about this is it doesn't look like a small, portable, you know, Best Buy type keyboard. It adds a little more heft to it, beefs up the size just a little bit more. And even though it's not that much difference in size than the SK173, it looks right on your rig, will not look weird sitting on top of an 88 note keyboard. And this thing plays great. And as you can see, it has the, the uh, antiqued uh, yellowed keys, which I think is a, is, is a nice elegant touch.